Jazzcast Pros. And we take money and we're like, if you're rich, you're bad. If you make a lot of money, then you're a bad person. And there are a lot of people who don't make a lot of money that aren't good people either. Like they're not necessarily connected. What we can do as business owners for our community is be good people and make as much money as we possibly can so that we can help and provide services to really good causes. That's my goal, you know, is to make money and and pouring back into this community. Hey ladies, do you own your own business or are you considering starting your own? Are you craving connection and are ready to feel seen? It's time to get real about what it takes to make it as a woman business owner. My name is Kelly Bush. And I'm Kelly Metris. And we're the hosts of Getting Real with Bossy, the podcast that unites and educates women business owners through real, raw, and honest conversations. Hi. 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 Hi, Kelly. How are you? Hi, Kelly. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm so glad we're getting to do this again this week. I know. Because the first, the first time didn't work out. How are things going? Uh, you know, my sprinklers went off in the kitchen for no reason, and um, everything's cleaned and put back and fixed, and no one knows why. That's fun. So today they went in and turned everything on, and they were like, it's getting really warm in here, and it's smelling like burning rubber again. Ugh. And so they shut everything off, and nothing like not knowing when your sprinklers are going to randomly go off again. Right. Yeah. It makes it really difficult to do business. So uh, I was ready to close my doors and move out of town and and all of that just because it's funny because with all the crisis, I mean, you know my story and all the crises we've been through. It was one day and like maybe $500 in product. So it's like nothing compared to what we've gone through. And I was just like, nope, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah, but sometimes I feel like that's how it's going to be. Like when I'm ready to just be done, it's going to be something so small. I'm like, this is just the last straw. I, I only have this much more room and, and you've taken it up. And then my, I don't know if the listeners know, but I fired my husband. Um, yeah, I don't think they know that. Yeah. And he comes in and deals with it also. And he was like, I'm in a really good place. I'm ready to talk work again. And I was like, I really literally like ready to move to Barbados like mm-hmm. today. Yeah, that's is that the new escape plan? Because I'll tell you, I was just in Barbados and it was amazing. Maybe that's why it's on my mind because you were just there. I'm jealous. I'm like, I want to be where Kelly was. I want to go to Barbados. No, usually it's Mexico. So yeah, it must be because you were just there. Right. Yeah. So how was your cruise? It was incredible. So this is the first vacation we've had since um, December of 2018. So it was time. It was necessary. You this during COVID, didn't you? I vaguely remember like in the middle of the pandemic. We booked one and then we unbooked it. And then I don't know, about four months ago, or five months ago, it was like, we have to go because I'm miserable. Um, work is tough. It's getting tougher. And we're going into, you know, this was end of summer. We're going into our slower season. And I don't want to be there for it. So let's just let's just escape. Like everything was amazing until the last day we went to dinner because like, with our package, we got one of these, you know, fancy restaurants and we were there and there's this group of older women and one man sitting and they're all like talking about their trip and they're just coughing all over the place and done. But they're like ways away from us. And Don's like, wouldn't it be funny if we get COVID from these ladies and went back to the room and we had plans and I was like, oh, start coughing. And he's like, it's just because we were sitting next to them. Drove home the next day went to work and then the following day tested positive for COVID. And I haven't been able to see your face. So let's talk about me, Kelly, and how this has affected my life because I haven't seen your face in like three weeks. And I was texting you when you were docking that I was counting down to seeing your face. And then you went and got COVID. <laughs> I know. Well, today I feel great. I'm just a little congested. No, no signs of COVID in me. So I can see you very soon. I got to go to work for a little while, though. Got to get some work done today. Get my Kelly time in. 
Mm-hmm. So yeah, so Marshawn was supposed to get interviewed on Tuesday and you were coughing up along and I was scrubbing sprinkler gunk off the walls. If anybody wants to know what that looks like. I got my bachelor's degree in sprinklerology. Um, oh, yay. Yeah. So if anybody needs to know how that works and it intertwines with the fire alarm systems and the fire departments locally and why you can't turn things on and off um, so that your other businesses can open. Super fun. Bossyrock at gmail.com. So, yeah, so we got Marshawn. <laughs> so Marshawn is a ray of sunshine. I know. I like her so much. I like everybody so much, but I, I enjoy enjoy her. She started coming to events during the pandemic, and then when we did the Kids Bossy, what do you think your mom actually does for work? She came, and I interviewed her daughter, who's just adorable. Oh, so Can we input I'll, that here? Can you start by telling me your name? Rowan. Rowan, what is your mom's name? Marshawn. Very good. Do you know what your mom does for a job? Pilates studio. Have you ever been there before? Yes. You have. What's your favorite thing about her job? I don't know. Is it fun to be there? Um, yeah. Do you think you want to own a Pilates studio when you grow up? No. Do you know what you might want to do when you grow up? I don't know yet. Well, you're very fashionable, so I could see you doing something with fashion someday because I've been staring at your sunglasses since you walked in. They're very cool. Do you think that mom's good at her job? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that she works hard? Yes. Yeah. Well, I bet she's a real good mom. Yeah. Yes. Is there anything else you want to say? No. Thank you so much. This sweet little girl. So, yeah, so I'm excited to, to talk to her today and hear all about High Vibe co-work. And I do know one story about how she got the name for it. It's pretty cute. So I'll make sure to ask it. This podcast has been brought to you by Gallery Salon, where beauty and art collide. You can find out more at gallerihair.com. Hey, y'all. I'm Erica Cervello, and I'm the owner as well as the stylist at Gallery Salon, located at 4 Elton Street in the neighborhood of the Arts in Rochester, New York. We specialize in everything from lived-in hair color to vivid creations, haircuts, wedding hair and makeup, structured manicures, gel extensions, and the best nail art in the city. We work closely with Rochester artists and makers to carry an array of handmade goodies for you to shop from. Gallery Salon is proud to offer gender-neutral pricing, and we are a certified LBGTQ plus safe zone. Our space and staff are welcoming and down to earth. We know you'll be comfortable to come as you are and celebrate your individuality at Gallery Salon. You can find us at galleryhair.com and Facebook or Instagram. Give us a call at 585-271-8340. Or better yet, swing by and meet us and see what we're about. Gallery Salon, located at 4 Elton Street in the neighborhood of the Arts in Rochester, New York. Live it, love it, lime it with Selena's Mexican Restaurant at the Village Gate. Come for the food, stay for the fun. Become a part of Selena's family. Selena's offers daily specials, happy hour at the bar, and catering, plus dietary menus for celiac, vegan, and vegetarian guests. When you're on the west side, grab a quick bite at the new Selena's Taqueria Grease, 745 Maiden Lane in the Tops Plaza. Find out more at selenas.com, S-A-L-E-N-A-S. Hi, I'm Kelly Bush, and I own Marshall Street Bar & Grill. Whether you're out celebrating with friends or looking for a catered event, Marshall Street is your number one choice. With board games, pool, darts, pinball, and three large screen projectors, you'll never run out of things to do. Check out our huge menu with over 60 items, including vegan and vegetarian food, 18 taps, unique spirits, and great daily specials. We've got something for everyone. Come see old friends or make new ones at Marshall Street Bar & Grill. You always have a home at Marshall Street. Welcome back to The Kelly Show. Yes, and another episode of Getting Real with Bossy. Hello. Hi. Welcome, Marshawn. Thanks for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. I am too, and I'm excited we're doing, we have Riverside and we have this opportunity and this option because it's pouring out and I'm really glad to not go outside. There's a definite plus to a uh, post-COVID world of doing things like this, even though I way prefer being in the space with people, but 
it's still nice to have this option. Well, welcome. Can you introduce yourself and tell us your business? Sure. I'm Rashawn Hargrave, and I'm the owner of High Vibe Cowork, which is a virtual community for women entrepreneurs and creators. I started it in twenty at the end of 2020, and as of December 1st, I just went full time. So I left my full time job to go full time as of December 1st, and yeah, that's. That's me. I host daily meetings kind of to support that group, whether it's around like accountability, mindset, virtual co-working. So those are the kind of daily meetings that I host for the group. And you were working full time prior to this and doing it on kind of on the side as well, right? Yeah. I was managing two local Pilates studios and then kind of doing this in the, the off hours. So you thought, I'll just take the leap. It'll be super easy. No, no big, no big thing. No, no (laughs) difficult transitions, right? (laughs) It was a long time coming. I'd been wanting to do it for a while, but it's really scary, you know, and the finances, stuff like that. And, you know, supporting my family based on this company that I just kind of made up and, you know, putting food on the table and things like that was really scary. But it's been so nice to not have that, like... I always felt like previously I was doing one company a disservice. Like if I was working on high vibe, then I wasn't providing service enough for the studio. And I had this like animosity towards the studio because it was taking away time and energy from high vibe, which is where like my heart really, really lies. So I'm really lucky because I have a, a dad who's an entrepreneur. So he's been really influential in guiding me and kind of seeing that path and seeing that it can be done. When he actually started his business, he was a single father of five kids. So wow. he um, has been a big inspiration. Dang. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> what was his business? So he owns a document management company and he works with car dealers. So he owns a SaaS company and he takes all the paperwork from car dealers and scans it up to the cloud. Awesome. Didn't even know that that was a job. Mm-mm. I feel like we learn that every interview. Like, that's a job. That's a job. Oh, that's a job. I yeah, and somebody was it. like, you know what? You need this done. I'm going to do it for you, and you're going to pay me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how did you come up with High Vibe Cowork, speaking of coming up with jobs that need to be done? I had been part of, like, networking groups and facilitated different groups and roundtables. And during 2020, I was in sales for a company and I was cold calling. I had to make about 200 cold calls a week for that company and everything was virtual. And I realized I wasn't showing up for myself the way that I typically would in an office. And so I just said, how can I bring in my community? And like, I'm sure if I'm struggling with this, other people are too. And so I reached out to my network and said, hey, I'm going to open a Zoom room on Monday for 30 minutes. We're going to plan out our week you know, set goals and intentions for the week. And then on Friday, we're going to get together and say, how did you do with what you set out to do? Um, Let's celebrate a win. And what's the lesson you took from the week? And then how are you going to practice rest and gratitude over the weekend to get ready for next week? And I did that, like, just kind of ran it as a beta the last 10 weeks of 2020 leading up to Christmas. And it was just really impactful. And it was really cool to kind of see you know, what opening a Zoom room can be to the community. And so I just kind of have grown it from there. It's so interesting because when I was going through your website and what I know from you, having met with you before, I kind of just thought this is, you know, everything's virtual because we have to be. And that's, that was, but this was very intentional. You wanted to do something that was virtual. You didn't need a brick and mortar to do what you wanted to do, like a typical co-work space or something like that. Yeah, when I was initially, I actually have a notebook that I was looking back through before I did the Bossy um, in October, that event. And in like 2019, I was like journaling about having a brick and mortar space and just being surrounded by other, you know, women who are just going after what they want and creative and COVID. The silver lining is that it has opened up what this could be to so many more people. Like my current cohort has people from Toronto and Philly and Baltimore and Florida and Texas. And so these people would never have been able to meet if it weren't for the virtual opportunity of it. Is that how you have it set up now? Like a Monday, Friday? Yeah, Monday, Friday are the bookends of it. And then Tuesday and Thursday is virtual co-working. So 
again, open a Zoom room, and then you kind of have your things that you want to get done. And so I just put on some music. My current favorite playlist for it is... If you've been thinking about starting a podcast and you want to include interviews with people across town, Riverside.fm offers unbelievable high-quality recordings regardless of your or your guest internet quality. And it also gives you separate audio and video tracks for each person speaking. And unlike Zoom, you don't have to install anything on your computer and your guests don't either. Head over to Riverside.fm and use promo code JazzyCast to get 60 free minutes of recording and 15% off a membership plan. Medieval lo-fi beats. If anyone's looking for a new playlist. Medieval lo-fi beats. Yeah. Can we like, hey, Jazzy, can you plug in a medieval lo-fi beat here? No, never even heard of it. (laughs) <laughs> because it's nice a lot of times like people are doing creative work whether it's like their newsletter or website copy or things like that so I was trying to find something that didn't have lyrics but still kind of like kept you in that creative space and found that and it's worked um, and then Wednesday I do millionaire morning mindset call so Mondays and Fridays are very tactical how are you going to move the needle forward then the Wednesdays kind of take you know, from the 20,000 foot level, you know, what blocks are coming up. Sometimes I do journal prompts. Sometimes we just talk through what's going well. Sometimes I do like money stuff because I think as on women entrepreneurs, money can be something that's weird to talk about. It's one of those things that what I have found, people think that everybody else has it figured out and they're the only ones who don't. And when you talk about it, you're like, nobody has it figured out. Everyone struggles with it. And I don't even think so. that's just on women. I think it's everybody. Like you have to have this false forward of I have my shit together because I'm a business owner. And it's like, you know, even when employees come in and and they ask you the random question that you have to answer and it's like, I'm going to answer it, but that's not like in a book somewhere. Like I just made that up. (laughs) Right. Right. And I I know 90% of it's true. The other 10% is likely true. (laughs) And I may decide that that was the wrong answer and like change my mind. But like, you just have to have this false, like I have the answers, like I know the answer and you know, I have the money and we're going to pay our bills and they see that they got their paycheck every week or they see that you're still open. So people just assume you have it figured out when really in the back end, you're like scrounging pennies and taking out credit cards. And <laughs> so, yeah, so I totally understand that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of the structure of the week. I run it in 10 week cohorts. So everyone who joins, they start week one together and they end week 10 together. And it's very niche agnostic, which is really cool because whether you're running a restaurant or selling dog treats or a coach, the journey of building a business is so similar. Like we all go through such similar struggles and we all question ourselves and doubt and fail. No matter what you're kind of serving the world with, you go through that journey very similarly. Yeah. That's something we've always found in Bossy that doesn't matter Mm -hmm. with the business. We're all, we all have the same struggles. Yeah. Yeah. I am going to apologize if my cat shows up on the mic, but I can't keep the door <laughs> shut, it. apparently. No, I love it. So every 10 weeks. So do you have people that, you know, reach out to you and you just started and they're like, but can I get into this one because I need it now? Do you do you let that happen or do you say, you know, yeah, you got to wait? And is that a struggle and difficult choice to make? Yeah, one of the because I cap it at six people. So if it is at six people, it's at six people. I found that that's kind of the magic number. With 30 minute calls on Mondays and Fridays, everyone gets a chance to speak and really get into what they're doing. So that's actually why I started my online platform. If anyone's heard of Mighty Networks, it's my online platform where I host. um, So people who can't get into a cohort, but still want to engage with the community or maybe even see what the community is about. Is it going to be valuable for me to spend that amount of time together? And so it's just a digital platform to host conversations and different topics. And I have a couple courses on there, things like that. So people can still engage with the community while they're waiting for the next cohort to open up. Is that um, done by like video or lives or um, like conversational text? Yeah, it's kind of all of those things. There's like monthly lives that you can have on there, but there's kind of written discussion. So I have 
eight or 10 different topics that are pertinent to entrepreneurs. And so whatever you're kind of in the need for, whether it is inspiration or education or just connection or celebration, like look what I did. You know, I think that's something a lot of people don't do is it feels weird to like, look what I did, look how great I am, you know, but it's so inspiring and important to celebrate those things along the way. Yeah, we're not allowed to brag because if we're brag, if we brag, we're bitches. Right. (laughs) Marshawn, what's something extraordinary that you've done recently? Ooh, extraordinary that I've done recently. I don't, it's not necessarily extraordinary, but it's kind of cool as I was on a commercial with Jazzy who does the production. Yeah, she had, she put out like a model shoot for this home meal delivery service that's now in Rochester. And so I was on the commercial for that. So I just got the the commercial the other day. So that was pretty cool. Oh, cool. I was just talking to her yesterday about that because we were talking about advertising. Yeah, that is so cool. I didn't know that. I think that's extraordinary. It was fun. Thank you. Is it your first, (laughs) is your first acting gig? It was my first acting gig. Are you going to, are you going to go on Broadway now? I don't think Broadway would have me after watching my performance. (laughs) I'm sure it was phenomenal. Wow, that's great. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, it was cool. So back in late 2020, what would you say the hardest hump or the hardest, the largest struggle or the the biggest issue that you didn't see when you decided to go live? That is a great question. Pricing, charging for, you know, I, I had a, I was working with a coach when I, back in 2021, when I was like, okay, I'm going to take this seriously. Like, I think this is a business. And the first thing she had me do was take just out of my vocabulary because I kept saying to her, I'm just opening a Zoom room. Like, anybody can do that. And so accepting that there's something impactful and powerful about the Zoom room and creating that space, it's like anybody can create a space. Who am I to, like, charge good money for that, you know, a a livable wage for opening a Zoom room and being like, what are you accomplishing this week? You know, so really stepping into the fact that my gifts serve the world in a way that deserve money. Especially when you're not like purchasing a product to sell, right? So you're like, okay, well, I have to make this money back even if I don't pay myself, right? So you're just like, the product is inside of you. Yeah. And that's hard too, because when I step into that, it's like, if I fail, it's me. It's people don't like me, or they don't want me, or they don't find value in me and what I'm serving. That's real. That was really hard. Were you pleased with the results? Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things that's also weird to hear about. Like, I don't know why we do this to ourselves. It's like, we doubt ourselves. And then when we hear other people are impacted by it, we're like, no, 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 I don't need to accept your compliment. But thank you. You know, we, so. we feel that a lot in Boston. Kelly and I talk about it. Like we like feel guilty. We're like, well, we're just trying to do what's right and like help people because we have the knowledge and we have the connections, you know, and it's like, well, it's also time and energy and the cost of the knowledge, right? Like we've mm-hmm. had the struggle. <laughs> we've, we've learned it. However, we've learned it, which is usually the hard way. <laughs> yeah. One of the kind of money blocks that I had to get through early on was, My mom was a social worker. She worked in jail. She worked for Alternatives for Battered Women. Like she made an impact in the community. And my dad worked for Bausch and Lam, where he made an income. And they were mutually exclusive. You can't make an impact and an income. And I didn't like we never had that conversation around the dinner table. It was just something that growing up, I just felt. So through this journey, it's like you can make an impact and an income. You know, you can charge for what you're worth and be of service, you know? That's fascinating on so many levels. I literally, we, and my husband and I have the conversation of like, we do what we do so that we can afford to live an average life and still make a difference. You think you think about like the people at the top of the the very large not for profits, you know, bringing in the the six figure incomes, and you're like, but shouldn't that money go to the people? But then they are, you know, they are working. But yeah, that's fascinating. That that's not a conversation people really have. It's just something that's like mutually understood for some reason. Mm-hmm. Not that it's right. Yeah, and we take money and we're like, if you're rich, you're bad. 
if you like make a lot of money, then you're a bad person. And there are a lot of like people who don't make a lot of money that aren't good people either. Like they're, they're not necessarily connected. And I think what we can do as business owners for our community is be good people and make as much money as we possibly can so that we can help and provide services to really good causes. That's my goal, you know, is to make money and and put it back into, you know, all the business. Like I love this mug I got from Susan Weiner Ceramics. And like, I love not purchasing this from Amazon, but pouring back into this community, you know? And that's something that is not cheap, right? So like you have to have the financial means to not order from Amazon. Right. You know, right. it's not just convenience. A lot of it is, it is cheaper or to go to, you know, the big box stores instead of local. But yeah, it always does. I love shopping local. It always makes yeah. me feel good. Yeah. Especially a bossy local. Do you ever find that it's a struggle to hold people accountable virtually versus if you were to be in person? I don't think virtually versus in person has been the biggest struggle. I would say the biggest struggle in holding people accountable is that life happens and not and so the Friday calls not being like, why didn't you get your stuff done? What and it's like, well, sorry that my sprinkler system went off on Tuesday when I was supposed to do A, B, and C. So finding that balance of like grace with everybody, but also like, okay, here's what you said you were going to do. How did you do? And like, even if on Monday we think that these things are important, but on Tuesday we get an interview from like our dream job, not accomplishing those things isn't bad. It's just your week went different than you anticipated. And so finding that balance of like holding them accountable, but having the grace and leeway of life happens, you know, not making anybody leave that Friday call feeling like they failed or they're less than or they're not good enough because they didn't do what they were supposed, they thought they should on Monday. Yeah, you that's, know? that's a tricky thing to navigate. And I think that right there is why you deserve to be paid for what you do, because not everybody could do that. You know, that's, that's, that's tough. And being able to do that with grace is really important. Yeah. And it's not for everybody. Like I've had a couple of people who've joined and been like, no, I needed my ass kicked on Friday. Like you were, you know, but for my niche and my group and my community, that's, that's what they need. Well, and that's a, a huge life lesson as a business ownership or an entrepreneur is that you do have to balance it. And you can't just call in sick today. You literally have to adjust things, right? So it's not as simple of, oh, I'm going to call in sick. Somebody else is going to pick this up for me. I'll go back into work tomorrow and start fresh. It's, oh, I have to call in sick today. I'm the only one that does this. (laughs) (laughs) So where does it fit in my priority list? Can it wait? Does it have to get done at 10 p.m.? Because it just has to get done. You know, like sales tax. You know, if I didn't get to it, it has to get done. But if it's a social media post or an advertising campaign that I didn't get live on time, it's going to hurt, but it can wait. And that's a huge lesson. I think it's important when you're like starting a business to think about the lifestyle you want to have around the business. You know, like I... I'm really lucky because I get to get my daughter off the bus every day. And I built it in 10-week cohorts throughout the quarter so that when it ends, I have two weeks off. And I've like naturally kind of built that into the schedule because I love facilitating conversations and I love hosting those groups. And I need a break to just like not be the person in charge of those calls and showing up every day. And when my dad started the business, this is something I got from him. He was a um, consultant and consultants get paid really well. But once you stop getting paid, you're just on the hustle for the next contract. And he's like, I wanted to build a business where I had this continual stream of income where once they become a customer, they're pretty much a customer for a long period of time. The sales cycle for him is just building on top of not trying to replace as much. So I think that's a really important question when you're starting a business is like, what type of lifestyle do I want to have around this business? 100%. He sounds like a real smart guy. Yeah, I think I'll keep him. How did you come up with the name? So when I was working for the software company, it was a very like male dominated industry and I knew it wasn't going to be forever, but 
I actually went to school to be a teacher and I didn't even know what else was out there. Like we were talking before, it's like, that's a business. So I started going to different networking groups and just meeting people out in the community and really seeing what them and their businesses were. And so I tried like Toastmasters and BNI and all the different networking groups. And I would leave them and I would call my dad and he'd be like, how high vibe was that? And so it was just kind of this like bar that I would judge these different events that I would go to and how I felt after. And so that's kind of, that kind of stuck. And, you know, I couldn't find exactly what I wanted. And so that's what I created and it just felt aligned. That's a great story. Are there other companies out there doing the same kind of thing you're doing? There are virtual co-working spaces, especially post pandemic. And there's physical co-working spaces. I think the cohort aspect of it is unique. It's not this open enrollment where you kind of come, but you're with a group that you kind of move it through. I have also found that a lot of people who create physical co-working spaces don't like to host the meetings. They like to create the space and you kind of do what you need to do in the space, but they don't want to like facilitate conversations. They don't want to host the workshops. They're there to just create the space. And one of my gifts is like the facilitation of the conversation and pulling different ideas from, you know, what people say and and reflecting back to them. Here's what I heard. Here's, you know, how you can grow into whatever's next for you. Can you talk to me and explain a little bit more about the Zoom room and what that looks like? Yeah, so it's, I normally start them at like 1030. We have like a five minute kind of grace period for people to come in and and then I put a couple prompts in the chat. I've gone back and forth between like having a Canva up of like, you know, here are prompts. But people like to see everybody's faces, you know. It has really created this cool community where people share very intimate parts of what they're going through. Goal setting and building a business is very vulnerable. And so they've really connected. And so I like the chat because then everybody can have everybody's face on screen so you can really see them. So I put the questions in the chat. Then I'll put on some music for people to kind of sit and think about it. And then I just popcorn style pick people. I take notes on Mondays of what they say they're going to do because a lot of times on Fridays they're like, what did I, what did I say I was going to do? So I keep track kind of give everybody five-ish minutes and then on to the next person. And can they communicate directly with each other or is that something they can do in private chats and stuff like that? Yeah, I keep the chat function open if they want to message people. Um, I also have a WhatsApp so they can message on there if they want to talk, you know, privately or just send something out to the group through that too. Right, because what you're offering is so unique because there are people from all over the country, and other countries it sounds like, and that's so unique. In the beginning of the pandemic, you know, Kelly and I are in the restaurant industry and we're part of the restaurant association, so we talk a lot with the people in our area, but once we started doing these virtual calls and we had people from all over the state, it was so helpful to hear what's going in on downstay, what's happening in New York City, and now being able to connect with those people is so great. This is what's working for us here. What's working for you there? Um, This is your touristy time. Mars is at a different time. How did that go? So being able to connect with people, even if it's not your industry from around the world someday, I'm sure, as things are going for you, is so valuable. And one of the things I really like about the group aspect, it brings so many different life experiences and paradigms and filters in which to understand problems or struggles or ideas or creatives to like, if if you have a problem, here's what I'm struggling with. You have so many different people to like pick their brain about it, which is really, really cool. Because there's so many things that even as a facilitator, I never would have thought of because, you know, someone else just thinks so differently than me. And so it's this really collaborative sort of space to bring um, ideas, questions, thoughts to. Do you have women and men or just women? Just women. Okay. Is that a conscious choice or is that just the way it's kind of naturally working out? I naturally kind of stumbled into it. You know, 
when I was selling, it was a very male dominated industry. So I seeked out like feminine energy type of spaces. And it just was so incredible and so collaborative that it organically fell into that. And I've just been intentional with it since then. I love the mind of women. It's like a a genetic thing, right? So like, you know, there's like biology and you hear people like women and men and men are from Mars and women are from Venus or whatever. But like really like biology, like our brains work different and they're meant to work different for various ways, right? And it's just fascinating. Like I get super sciencey about stuff, but like it's fascinating to me to sit in a room full of women in 2023, Right. Because that room full of women would have looked so different 500 years ago. right? (laughs) But we're we're still figuring shit out and getting it done, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's it's the amount of minds that it takes to get through life. And I feel like we're supposed to be in a group together and I'm not discounting the male mindset and what they bring to the table because it's necessary and important. And I love it. But it's just that like instinctual, I don't know, for as as catty as women can be, like when we get in the room together, like the power that you can feel, it's like it's supposed to be that way. Like we're supposed to be navigating the world and helping each other out. Yeah. And that's, I always leave bossy meetings feeling like that. Like I feel so uplifted and inspired and like I can do effing anything I set my mind to, (laughs) you know? Absolutely. We almost need them like every day. Cause then you're like, you go to sleep and you wake up the next day and it's like life again. And I'm like, where'd that, I want to, I want to go challenge the world. Like I need my bossy vibe back. Yeah. Well, and we were doing that at the beginning of the pandemic. We were doing a Zoom. It was a Zoom room, I guess. We were doing that once once a week, and then went to once a month, and it was so helpful. Like, need that connection. Yeah, and it's one of those things that part of why I think it falls off is because it's not urgent. It's super important, but it's not urgent. And as, you know, women entrepreneurs and women in life, there are so many things on our list that are important that it can easily fall to the side. And one time I was driving to a bossy meeting um, and I was on the phone with my sister and it just had been like a long day. And I was like, I'm so exhausted. Like, I don't feel like leaving the house. And she's like, how do you push yourself to go to this meeting when like all you want to do is crash on your couch? And I was like, I remember how I felt when I left the last one and I need to feel like that again. You know, I just need that in my day right now. So we totally we get all it. the time. <laughs> we do, we do. Because there's sometimes it's a lot. I can't do it. <laughs> and then you do it and you're like, oh, I'm so happy I did it. Uh huh. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, thank you for that validation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And we, and we hundred percent get it. Cause like it's, it is too. It's just, it's a one, it, it's a free night. Right. So like, it's usually already, you've already set your calendar. So you're like, okay, I, I don't have to do anything right now. And then you're like, I could do nothing. And that would be really nice. <laughs> you know? Hey, if you're enjoying this episode, check out the healthy illness podcast with me, Kelly Marie, as we build healthy relationships while living with mental health conditions. I'm diagnosed and live with borderline personality disorder, major depression, and generalized anxiety. And despite those diagnoses, I've been able to live a full life. I have healthy relationships, a great career, and my mission is to help you do the same. So join me for Healthy Illness Podcast. New episodes every Monday on the Jazzcast Pros Network found on the podcast player you're listening to right now. Be the light. So what did Mershon want to be when you were 10? I wanted to, it's funny that you asked that because I was just going through um, a book with my daughter the other night. I bought her the same one and I wrote in it when I was nine and I bought her the same one. And so she's going to like write down her answers. But I always wanted to be a veterinarian. Like I always loved animals. I loved being around animals um, and I wanted to help them. And then I realized that you had to put animals down. And I was like, mm, or like see them sick and hurt. And I was like, never mind. <laughs> so, how, many an- how many animals do you have now? We don't have any at the moment. We had to put actually both of our dogs down in 2022. Oh. Mm. So mm. it was a rough year. Yeah. yeah. Sorry for That's that. That's so sad. Thank you. Yeah. And you wanted to be a teacher, or you went to school to be a teacher? Yeah, I actually, so then like middle school, I always played sports growing up and I played three sports all through middle school and high school. And so movement was a big 
part of my life. So I went to school to be a phys ed teacher um, and graduated with that. And I coached high school sports for a couple years. I actually currently coach my daughter's lacrosse team, which is really fun. But that's like an hour. And I leave that hour like, how did I do this for six hours? (laughs) Hurting these cats. (laughs) Are you in Ironically? I'm not. I'm in Rush. Okay. So we're in the Rush Henrietta School. Every time I hear lacrosse, I just assume people are in (laughs) Ironically. I grew up in Greece and like, I did not know what lacrosse was, except for I had a cousin who lives in Irondequoit and like, so like he knew, you know, <laughs> so it was like one of those yeah. things growing up that I just always yep. assume people are in Irondequoit if they play lacrosse. Yeah. The West side didn't really have it when I was growing up. I went to Gates and, um, we didn't have it. So I'd never even like watched a lacrosse game until I started dating my husband. He played lacrosse at Geneseo. And so, you know, he's been coaching at Rush Henrietta for forever and so my daughter's gotten into it and you know it's fun it's really fun well and coaching and education I mean that that leads right into what you're doing today so good good picks there yeah it feels like this really interesting culmination of my background in education you know and and thinking about my path and when I left teaching I felt like wow I was so passionate about this I put so much time and energy in getting my degree and applying for jobs and long-term subbing and all those things and so it kind of felt like this failure that I wasn't finishing that path and then gaining all this experience in small business when I started with the software company they had just signed their first customer outside of New York State and then in the decade that I was with them they were then in 20 had customers in 26 states so that growth I was able to learn so much about so many different things that I you know if you're in you know a bigger company you kind of have your silo but I I was kind of a jack of all trades there so it's like this weird culmination of my background in teaching and what I learned in small business kind of meshing together. I have to say 100% get that. I have a degree, a master's in special ed. Mm, yep. A very expensive degree and <laughs> I am obviously not teaching at the moment. So um, yeah. And it is it is a weird like the things that you learn that you don't expect people will be like, oh, you have a master's in special ed and you own a restaurant. Ha ha ha. And I'm like, you have no, no idea. Right. Yeah. I'm like, I use so many hillside tricks at work <laughs> on a regular <laughs> basis. So I did where at South Kelly and I got to be close is that we worked at Hillside together. And yeah, I'm like, I use tips and tricks from that experience mm-hmm. and that education all the time. Yeah. yeah we, we have lots of different terms. You're hillsiding. You're being a hillsider. We have lots of <laughs> It comes into play all the time. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, my employee just hillsided it. And she does exactly what I'm talking about. I hear you. And, it, you. and it's not a negative thing, hillside, if you're listening. Mm-hmm, not I'll, at all. Can, if you want a message, we'll we'll talk more about it. Yeah, not at <laughs> all. It's just a, a, a trait of, of behavior. Mm-hmm. Yep. A behavior trait. Right. So here's you today. You've told us about your business, how you've gotten to where you are. It sounds absolutely amazing. Where do you see this right here? Do you see that in five, 10 years from now, it's still this and you're happy and you love it? Or do you see like, you're like, no, I have goals and dreams and aspirations for what this is going to look like. And either answer is fine. Yeah, I definitely, I'm a dreamer. I'm like very much, it's, it's funny my husband is very much like, he's a special ed teacher as well. And so he's very like, even keel, everything's fine. Like, and I'm like, no, we're going to do all the things like, you know, the the beginning, the beginning of the year. I'm like, Ryan, what's your word for the year? He's like, what are you talking about? You know, And I'm like, where do you want to be five years from now? He's like, I don't, uh, close to retirement. I don't know. And uh, (laughs) I actually, I would love to write a book. And I'm kind of in like ideation phase of a book. I would love to take high vibe where I wasn't running all the meetings and I can, other people can kind of step in and be like, I want to facilitate, you know, cohorts too. And, you know, it's not just me running the cohorts. It's more, you know, can be more community led or having people kind of step into those roles. Well, and being virtual, you've already set yourself up for that. You could have these run all over everywhere that's incredible yeah I think it'd be cool to do retreats too I think retreats would be a really cool because it's in the same idea of like collaborative like pulling people in to do what they're great at and just have people leave feeling 
incredible and inspired and excited and connected. That would be awesome. We actually just interviewed uh, Angelina Hilton, um, just finished her book. Oh, really? She just wrote a book. Yeah. So you should reach out. And she worked with a local woman. Ebony Nicole I Smith. I was just editing her trans or doing her transcription. So, Oh, yeah. were you? Yep. Ebony yeah, Nicole I didn't know Smith. she had a business name. But yeah, mm-hmm. she worked with her. And it's very similar, it sounds like, to what you're doing for your business and the fact that she has check-ins and you're expected to write for like a certain amount of time and then you have to check back. So it's like a constant like accountability. Yeah. There's a person there. Um, but yeah, so she just finished her book. So cool. I'm excited to, to see what happens with that. Yeah, that's awesome. And I know people that um, like to do retreats. So yeah. if you ever want to partner <laughs> up and help us with our next one, we're, uh, we're in discussions on what we're going to do next year. Well, I guess cool. it's this year now. Yeah, it's this yeah. year. This wow. year. It's 2023. I know. 2023. Mm. <laughs> it's my year. I keep saying. Yeah. 2025 is my year. So you can have. You I feel like you're pushing it out. I'm like, no, 2023. I'm taking it. If I keep saying it out loud, <laughs> I am going to. What is? What do people say? Um, not will it to happen. You're, you're putting it out in the universe. Yeah. yeah manifesting. manifesting. I'm manifesting. Yeah. I'm going to keep saying it out loud. So it freaking happens because I am over where life has been in the past few years and ready. Um, How do you market your business? Is that a tough thing to do? Because it's not a brick and mortar. It's not something you're marketing to everyone in the world. So it's not like it must be tough. It is. I'm still stepping into what, you know, like I said, I left my full-time job December 1st. And so... I thought like December 1st and then I was just going to jump all in and I was going to do all the things and it was going to be great. And, you know, when you have a full-time job, you're like, okay, you go into work and you have these directives and you know what you're supposed to do. And working at High Vibe in the couple hours outside of that was like, okay, I'm just going to do like the fun stuff. Like I'm going to write an Instagram post and I'm going to work on my Canva and I'm going to send a couple LinkedIn messages. And now it's like, you have to wear all the hats every day. And how are you actually moving the needle forward? Not like, this would be fun to do. It's like, no, you have to, um, like, you have to know your marketing numbers and you have to know, you know, what your sales funnel really looks like and pour into it every day. One of the things that's interesting is I think that my group is most impactful for people who are, they know what they want to do, but they just don't quite know how to grow it. And that can be so many people, but they don't necessarily like all live in the same place, if that makes sense. So because it's niche agnostic, it's not like I'm going after just people who are hairstylists for, you know, curly hair. Like it's just, it's like anyone who feels called to start a business, but wants to be surrounded by other people doing the same thing. It's like, could be so many people. So I actually worked with, do you guys, you both know Chelsea from The Hive co-work. Um, her and I sat down a couple weeks ago and just kind of like brainstormed sales and marketing process. And that was really, really helpful because it's hard to like create the sales and marketing funnel and execute. Like those are two different hats and two different energies and two different mindsets and spaces to be in. So creating space around both of those has been really, really good. I'm just starting to get into like what LinkedIn looks like for marketing for myself. I think a lot of a lot of people who want to get into a business or a side hustle or a, something like that live on there. So yeah. One question and one thing I want to say. One, I was looking at your website and I love, where did I write it down? What I think what is, makes you different than other people who are doing what you do. You say, what actions are, are you ready to take to transform your business? And I love that because if I'm looking for a group to work with or a coach or a mentor, I want to know that I, I, I always see, I'm going to show you this. I'm going to do this for you. I want, I want to know that I'm walking away with something. And I think that's what you offer and that's what you build with your groups And I think that's fantastic, and I love that. So I want to let you know that. And also, what is it to be a VIP for a day? I want to know more, Mm. because Kelly and I want to be VIPs for a day all the time. (laughs) So what does that mean? Yeah, so a VIP day is looking at 
where you want to be six to 12 months from now and building backwards to how to get there and also setting up what assets, what rituals, what routines, what software do you need to help you get to where you want to be? So whether it's like a financial goal or a number of clients or wherever you want to be 12 months from now, how do we reverse engineer it? And then how do we take the toolbox that I have of working with entrepreneurs as far as like email marketing or your Google Calendar or Asana template or, you know, a sales funnel? How do we create your sales funnel so that you can then go out and execute? Because I think a lot of times as entrepreneurs, we want to do everything the hard way or we find somehow we find the hardest way to do it. So how can you be super efficient and strategic about what this next your north star is this and how do you filter every all of your actions that you're doing keeping that in mind very cool so that's what a vip day is like an intensive i'm working on you day i love it yeah yeah very cool so i love niche agnostic Mm -hmm. thanks i've never heard that term before did you make that up i think so it just kind of popped in my brain one day i love it (laughs) It's great, though. It describes what you do in such a defined way that's, like, easy, easily understandable. Yeah. yeah. And I love that you have actionable items and that the people coming have to take responsibility for them. Like, you're not saying, I'm going to transform your business. You're saying, I'm going to give you the tools and the help so that you can transform your business. It's such a better way yeah. to walk away from something like what you're doing. Then, oh, wait, yeah. now you're gone. Crap, what do I do? You know, you're really, really setting them up to be successful. It chunks it out into like bite sized pieces. I think for visionaries and people who have big dreams, they see that what they want is the end result and they're like, well, there's a hundred million things I could do to get there. Where do I even start? And so every week it's what are two to three things you're going to do? Because you can really chunk it out and say, I could do two things this week. But then in a matter of 10 weeks, now you've taken 20 to 30 steps forward towards where you want to be and and what your goals are. And so it's, it's not this huge overnight massive transformation. It's small steps towards where you want to be with like a, an idea in mind that's achievable and doable, but also takes into consideration that we have a lot of other things going on, you know? Right. Tis life. Mm-hmm. If you are enjoying this episode, subscribe to the Heart of the Hustle podcast on the Jazz Cast Pros Network, available right here on the podcast player you're listening to now. The podcast to help you turn your side hustle into a profitable small business. I am your host, Motivation, an award-winning business owner and coach in Rochester, New York. My mission is to teach you all of the things I wish I knew while starting a business and help you avoid the pitfalls of entrepreneurship. Subscribe to the Heart of the Hustle podcast. And remember, nothing comes to a sleeper but a dream. Over and out. Can you recommend to us three amazing business owners that you respect with women business owners out there? Yes. Susan Weiner Ceramics, who I'm drinking this beautiful mug with um, in the Rochester area. Chelsea from The Hive, who I also mentioned earlier. And M. Kobe on Etsy has a really cool Etsy store. I have a lot of artwork from her up in my house. It's beautiful and it's diverse and it's a women black owned business and it's just yeah. I love her work on Etsy. Oh, check it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wrote it down. It's in the notes. Rashan, thank you so much. I love that you created this from essentially nothing and that you saw your skill set and what you were strongest at and how to help other people and created a business out of it. And I just I'm so happy for you and I'm happy that you've taken the leap and I I think that you're going to see amazing things in five years and I can't wait to read your book. (laughs) Thank you and thanks for having me. (laughs) How can people find you if they want to sign up? Yeah, so um, I have a website, highvibecowork.com and there you can find the Mighty Networks uh, login to see those plans as well. And I'm the social media platform I'm most active on is Instagram. So it's at High Vibe Cowork on Instagram. Well, thank you so much for spending the day with us. And thank you for adjusting as life hit us in the 
in the butt earlier this week at her <laughs> originally planned time. Um, but yeah, that's, that's business ownership, and that's how that, that goes. So we appreciate yep. your flexibility. Yeah, and thank you for everything you do with Bossy. It really it makes a difference every day. So I'm so glad to be a part of the group. And we're happy thank to have you, you as a part of the group, too. That was a great interview. It was. She's a great woman, and I just love that she found, it seems like the perfect calling, a good compilation of her skills and what's needed. And everything she's done up until now has really lent itself to what she's doing and it's given her the best education. Uh, and I love that she, she she saw a void and she she filled it. That's that entrepreneurial, I can't say that word ever, entrepreneurial mindset. Mm-hmm. And had a great mentor with her dad. <sighs> He sounds amazing. Maybe when we do our next um, podcast coming up, uh, we <gasps> can interview him. Bossies. We could do a Dads of Bossies. Right. And it sounds like he may still be working, so we can actually interview him, too. That'd be cool. No, she has a great story, and I, I just love what she's created. I know. I kind of, I'm like, do I need this? I feel like I could need this. I might need this. It's actually very similar. I'm doing that program with Golden, Golden Sachs, and um, theirs is a little bit more focused, like you know what you're going to be doing every week ahead of time. Like it's more structured in that manner. Um, But that's a lot of what it is, is you meet Monday, you learn something to take into your business. You have meetings throughout the week to work on that with your different groups. And then you meet in a large group again on Friday and kind of tie it all up. So it's like a a very similar setup, but I like hers because it's, it stays small. So like with that program, it's like 160 people Monday and Friday. And then the fun parts of the six people group on like Thursday, where it's like the same six people every week. So she's taken like my favorite parts of what I'm doing with that group and like made it an approachable concept. I don't even think she knows it. So that's uh, highvibecowork.com and follow her on Instagram. So as for us, thank you for joining us. Uh, we hope that you enjoy the, the conversation. Join us next time for more awesome bossy stories. You got to follow us online at B-O-S-S-Y-R-O-C, Bossy Rock, and join at bossyrock.com backslash join. B-O-S-S-Y-R-O-C and email us and participate in the conversation at bossyrock at gmail.com. All right, bossies. Thank you for listening. Now subscribe, get out there, be bold, be brave, and be the boss. This podcast has been brought to you by Gallery Salon, where beauty and art collide. You can find out more at galleryhair.com.